Uh, and, and it was one of these studies where they ethically had to stop the study just after they got it started because the results were so lopsided, they couldn't ethically continue the study with the standard treatment arm. Um, uh, and, and I just saw a paper um, uh, came out uh, this last ASH meeting where um, if you compare somebody with chronic myelogenous leukemia and an age match control, uh, they live similar lengths of time. Like, it doesn't look like they're dying of their CML anymore. Um, and, and so this is, you know, uh, just a groundbreaking uh, change in our understanding of what makes a cell go and, and, and uh, what doesn't. Next slide. Um, so that was 2001. Uh, this actually isn't complete because I thought of another one this morning. Um, uh, we now have three drugs for CML, imatinib, nilotinib, dazatinib, to say nothing of bosutinib, uh, uh, and a handful of others that are, are coming. Um, uh, wouldn't you know it that imatinib also is real good at this odd tumor in the stomach, um, and uh, uh, dazatinib is probably good in prostate cancer, but we'll sort that out later. Um, I, when I was in Boston uh, uh, doing my, my training, I got to see some of the first patients on erlotinib. This is a lung cancer drug, and um, I'll never forget one of these first patients uh, is a guy, he was fairly young, had never been a smoker, um, and uh, had been an avid skier a lot of his life, never, you know, did anything, came down with lung cancer that just kind of grew through everything. And um, uh, he got put on, he came into the appointment in a wheelchair on oxygen uh, and got put on the, the uh, original, excuse me, this was the gefitinib study. And um, about a month later, he was back skiing at altitude. I mean, uh, you know, just these incredible changes, and that's because a small percentage of lung cancer is driven by these mutations in, in this protein called EGFR. Not able, this is now EGFR, and, and gefitinib can, can, and erlotinib both target the same thing, could, could turn that off. Kidney cancer now has sunitinib, serafinib, pizopinib. Uh, um, now these don't end in IBS, but that's because they're serine threonine kinase inhibitors, not tyrosine kinase. So everolimus, temserolimus, um, uh, breast cancer has lapatinib, uh, and then actually the latest addition is vandetinib in, in, in thyroid cancer. Um, this is since 2001, this is the list. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, and, and this is a big iceberg. Um, there's a lot more that haven't gotten through that are working their way through and just picking apart different diseases one by one, learning what drives this cancer, what drives that cancer. Um, and, and uh, um, you know, it's not to say that these drugs don't have side effects. Some of them do, but, but compared to where we were, you know, what we've traded is we've gotten much better efficacy and much less toxicity. Next slide. So we've done the MABs, the IBs, now we're on to the OMS. Um, uh, uh, so, um, the Human Genome Project uh, was um, put forward uh, and really got off the ground in 1989. And um, uh, in 1989, they projected it would take uh, about 15 or 16 years to actually take four individuals and, and go through all their DNA and say, okay, the order goes G, C, A, 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 G, A, T, a, T, T, G, T, you know, all the way through. I think you guys know better than me. Is there about a trillion bases in a, in a human? In, in a, in a human? Uh, I think it's about three that three, three trillion. So, um, uh, so it's not really surprising that it would take a long time to, to, to do this, right? Um, so from 1989 to 2003, at the cost of um, $3 billion, uh, they, they sequenced four individuals from start to finish. You know, the comment was made, everything that's needed for life is included here uh, in, in DNA. And so for the first time, it was kind of like a blueprint for a human. Not so much a blueprint for a cancer, but blueprint for a human. Uh, how do we do this? And, and uh, this really began, I mean, was, was this incredible um, wealth of knowledge and technique and technology and strategy for, for going to do this. Now this is 2003, right? Okay, do you guys know where you were in 2003? Uh, let's see, who's running for president? We can figure this out, uh, 2003, anyhow. Um, 2011, I can take a piece of a patient's uh, tumor, send it to a lab, 
for a cost of about ten to fifteen thousand dollars in a month I can have their entire cancer genome start to finish so I, my family and I we used to drive cross country and, and uh, uh, every summer we'd go back and forth to New York and we used to play this game called 20 questions and, and uh, I don't know if this was just something unique to my family or you did it, but somebody would think of a person, place, or object, and then my brother and I, who were in you know, early elementary school, would say, is it a dog? Uh, is, it, you know, or is it big or is it small? And, and you know, the answer could be yes or no, and, and ideally after 20 questions, you could, you could guess what it was, right? That's science in 1989 to 2003. It's very much driven by well, gosh, I think NF-kappa B is going to be important for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Um, or, or I think that uh, bcr able is going to be relevant in, in chronic myelogenous leukemia. So I'm going to look at that one, right? And, it, you know, look, after 20 questions, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. You've wasted a whole lot of time. <laughs> hey, look, we, we drove all the way across country doing this, right? Um, uh, but now with a cancer genome, it's sort of like sitting down with a master professor who, who says, all right, let me explain cancer to you. Here's how this cancer started. Here's how it got going. Here's what made it metastasize. Here's what um, you know, caused it to grow in this situation. Here's what, how it evaded the immune system. And it's like having a blueprint, if you will, or, or it's like doing archaeology with a map from, from the time where you had it. You know, it, it, it's giving up its secrets, if you will. So as opposed to being hypothesis driven, now it's data driven. So, so I think a month ago, maybe, uh, they published the sequence of 34 patients with multiple myeloma. Whole sequence, start to finish. Found some surprises. Boy, who would have guessed that, that uh, in 6% of patients with, with um, uh, multiple myeloma, there's, there's a mutation in BRAF at position 600 where valine gets substituted to glutamic acid. Because you know what's interesting about that? We found the same mutation in melanoma, uh, in melanoma and 50% of patients with melanoma, their cancer vanishes on this drug. Well, that's kind of cool. Wonder if we could do that in myeloma. Never would have come up with that on our own. Um, uh, and so now it's just a question of, well, we got the drug, we got the patients, put them together, what happens? You know? um, so we've gone from this you know, guesswork, you know, hypothesis driven now to this time where it's, where it's um, uh, very data driven. Um, uh, the, these are obviously expensive tests, but and I don't think most patients are going to need them, but we're going to find the lexicon, right? So we got 34 patients with myeloma sequence. Well, now we really know we don't need to pay attention to um, 30,000 genes. We actually really only need to look at about seven key genes in that patient to get a sense for why they have myeloma. And now we need to figure out, okay, if we can shut off ABLE in, in CML, maybe we just need to shut off ICAPA kinase in, in, in uh, myeloma. You know, we have a roadmap, whereas before we didn't. So, this is Tracktown, USA, right? So um, this is a quote. Uh, the world of sport was shocked by the feat of Roger Bannister. On May 6, 1954, he broke the four-minute barrier in the mile. While improving upon the world record by only a few seconds, he changed the complexion of distance running in a single afternoon. Track records fell like ripe apples in the late 50s and 60s. Will the same happen in the field of cancer treatment? You know, what these changes have done, these, these ibs, abs, and ohms, Ibs, Mabs, and Ohms, is, is they've kind of gotten rid of the idea of limits. Drucker left Boston because they told him you can't do it, right? There were limits. You can't do That's not cancer. That's not biology. There's limits. You can't cure cancer with pills that don't have side effects. Uh, that doesn't happen. That's fallen. So here's a drug, uh, Seattle Genetics 35. Uh, also con called Brentuximab Vendetoin. Uh, uh, it's got a Mab in it. Um, and, and here's the drug, right? So you take an antibody. So what an antibody does is it will precisely bind one thing, right? Okay. Well, we know on the surface of Hodgkin's lymphoma cells, they have this, this thing called CD30, okay? They all have it. Everybody has it. So let's make an antibody to CD30, right? Okay, fine. What happens? Now, now the immune system should go after that, right? Well, in fact, that experiment was done. It really didn't do much. Um, shoot. All right, go back to the drawing board. What do we need to know? Well, let's do an experiment now. Let's, let's, let's add this little tag on the back side of the antibody, okay? Call it a linker. Um, and to that linker, we'll attach the most nasty chemotherapy we can imagine, right? Metancine. 
Metancine, you can just barely put it in somebody's IV and they just fall apart. I mean, that's, that, was, that, was, that was a relic of the NCI days where they were screaming. Well, here's the thing. Attach that to an antibody that only takes it to the cancer cell, now you got something, right? So now you got, I mean, this is like carpet bombing versus smart bombs, right? So this is a smart bomb. I'm really kind of stuck on the war analogies. For, <laughs> not great for a Eugene audience, but uh, forgive me. <laughs> Next slide. So this is, this is uh, a piece of data uh, presented at um, ASH. It's called a waterfall plot. And, and let, me, let me explain what a waterfall plot is. Each little bar here going up or down is, is a patient, OK? So there's uh, 102 bars here, 102 patients in, in the research study. Um, this, is, this line right here is 0, OK? And, and, and uh, so if. Uh, I give you this drug and I repeat a CAT scan and it has not changed your disease after I give you the antibody, you, you're, you're, you would look a lot like this right here, okay? This, little pa this one patient here who didn't really change, zero. Um, if on the other hand it grows by 100%, the line would be up, up here, okay? If, if on the other hand the tumor shrinks by 100%, you would look like this person over here, okay? So, you know, what, we, what they did in this experiment was they took 102 patients who really had no other options for their Hodgkin's disease. They'd been through, you know, they weren't cured by initial therapy. They got a transplant. It still came back. They'd been through a number of regimens, didn't slow their disease. Now let's give them brentuximab. What happens? They all shrink. I mean, maybe not everybody, but that's pretty impressive. Almost everybody gets a, a, a significant response. And if you look at enough CAT scans over time, you realize that even this is, is really meaningful. Um, and, and the question is actually, are some of these patients cured? You know, here are patients who've been through everything. Um, we don't anticipate we're curing them, but we got a, a smart bomb, precision guided uh, uh, um, targeted therapy. And, and I mean, this kind of waterfall plot is just, you get a bunch of oncologists in the room and, and a hush falls and oh my gosh are you kidding me I mean and and the drug is really well tolerated I mean it's it's an antibody it kind of goes in you really don't have much side effects your blood counts don't really change all that much I mean it's incredibly well tolerated because now Newton's laws of gravity are kind of being solved right let's 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 sort of tag a chemotherapy to this antibody and the patient doesn't get side effects because um, the chemotherapy is only going to the tumor cells 